Okay, these models here are the aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagrams you need to know to explain the macro economy. And basically, you can summarize everything you need to know in five diagrams. The first diagram shows the basic aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. Aggregate demand is down and sloping, aggregate supply is fairly horizontal to begin with, then becomes steeper, and it then becomes totally vertical. The totally vertical bit represents the maximum the economy can produce with its current resources. On a macroeconomic level, it's the same as a production possibility curve in a microeconomic level. Key thing to know about drawing this diagram is that you must put price level on the vertical axis and you must put real GDP on the horizontal axis. Price level represents inflation, real GDP represents output or economic growth. Once you've mastered drawing the basic diagram, you then have to be able to show changes in it. You have to be able to show aggregate demand increasing or decreasing. In these next two diagrams, I'm showing aggregate demand increasing. If it was decreasing, you just do the opposite. The key thing is, uh, to see the effect on the economy, you have to know whether or not the increased aggregate demand is coming about when the economy has lots of unused resources, which is the first diagram, or when we're operating close to full employment, which is the second diagram. If the economy has lots of unused resources, the increased aggregate demand leads to lots of firms producing much more output. Therefore, you get a large increase in output and you get a small increase in inflation. So a large increase in output, small increase in inflation. However, if the economy is operating close to or approaching full employment, the opposite will happen. The increased aggregate demand causes more demand in the economy, but firms find that they can't increase their output, or they have to buy raw materials from further away, which pushes up their costs, or they have to poach labor from other employers, which pushes up costs. The effect is, therefore, that this increased demand doesn't result in a lot of increased output, economic growth, as shown down here, but what it rather results in is the price of the available products going up. So if you increase aggregate demand when you are at or close to the full employment level, what happens is the economy suffers a lot of inflation and only a little bit of economic growth. These last two diagrams show what, ha show what happens to aggregate supply. This first diagram shows what happens if firms face increased costs of production. The important thing to see here is that the maximum output the economy can produce, as shown by the vertical aggregate supply component, does not change. But if, for example, the world's price of oil goes up, firms will need a higher price to produce any level of output. And so the effect is to shift the aggregate supply vertically upwards. In this case, if firms face this increased cost, you could see that the price level would rise, you'd get inflation in the economy, and the economy would shrink. There'd be a decrease in output. Economic growth would slow. The last diagram shows the effect of a successful supply-side policy. If you have successful supply-side policies, and remember they take a long time to uh, take full effect, it shifts the aggregate supply to the right. The economy becomes more efficient. The economy becomes more competitive. What this results in, in the economy, is a decrease in the price level, decrease in inflation. In other words, we can produce more, so there's less pressure to push up prices. And also an increase in output. We gain some economic growth as well.